version 51 has just launched and it's filled with so much amazing content. You've got new code blocks for spring push and rotation, which allows us to launch objects in a completely new way. We've also got a pop-up. Now this is really interesting. I can imagine some great heads up displays that can be created with this. There's even a pop-up with a countdown. Definitely gotta try some more out with this. So check it out, it's available on the Actions tab. There's even an option to show a pop-up for everyone. So you could do like, game starting in 10, nine, eight. I mean, like super cool stuff. We've got physical velocity of player, which is amazing. And we've got angular velocity of objects. So for those in the math department, we're pretty excited, not gonna lie. We've also seen a new menu design. Now I don't have this, but some people have been reporting this new menu. And there's a new Learn Hub. It's this brand new location of videos where you can scroll through a lot of great information that's gonna teach you from making your first world all the way through building your first mini game. I highly encourage you to check it out. There's hundreds of awesome videos in there and we were very honored to work with the Horizon team to create those videos. On the Worlds tab, you might have noticed there's a Created by Friends section under For You. There's a lot of new sections in here. I mean, it's way easier to discover new worlds than ever before. And you might have noticed under Settings, you can actually change your personal boundaries. If you haven't done this, I recommend turning it off, but that's up to you. You still get a little bit of a boundary, but it's just not that huge, I can't high five type of boundary. So definitely check that out. You might have also noticed that there's a new code block, player has role. This returns a Boolean of true or false if a player has a specific role at an event. Of course, we don't have any event creation tools, but assuming that must be coming because this is definitely a precursor. For my scripters out there, check this out. If you grab the comment from the values tab, you can comment out code by pulling the comment outside of the when world is started and then placing your code block below the comment. Mind blowing. I use this all the time when I want to comment something out. It is fabulous. Definitely try this out on your own time. And if you've got some lists, check out these new list code blocks. List contains item is a super easy way to check if there's a player or an item or anything inside of a list. You've also got add value at index, which is super useful if you're making ordered lists. So you can now add a value at a specific point in a list, which is super cool. And I mean, seriously, and there is remove item, which is so much more easy to use than previously we had to look up the item number. Interesting under the tags, there is no longer desktop or mobile friendly. It looks like those have been removed. Whether they've stopped working on it or not, I don't know, but that's quite interesting because I'm pretty sure that was the only thing that was causing us to speculate about there being desktop and mobile coming. All right, so now we're gonna take that pop-up code and try it out. So we're gonna do when player enters world, display a pop-up with a countdown of 10 seconds. Now the cool thing here is we can actually use text formatting like breaks and all the other ones that you'll find in the video essentials bundle. <laughs> More on that in just a moment. And now that we've created this really cool line, let's test it out. Wow, look at that countdown. This is incredible. Now I know many of you have been added to the video essentials bundle, but have you been back recently? Because there's a lot in there. And if you haven't been added, leave your Oculus username in the comments and we'll add you within the next day or so and then go check it out. So when you do is you go into an empty world, you press on the video essentials bundle that you've been added to, you hit the three dot icon and then hit import world. You're then gonna wanna delete anything you don't wanna keep and at that point you can import those assets that you've isolated and bring them into your world. But what you're gonna wanna check out is this new button elevator, which is super cool. I know a lot of you have been wanting to make button elevators rather than the hand tracking vibration elevator that I absolutely adore. But you know, if you want a button elevator, check this guy out. It starts at three floors, very easy to use. We've also added a bouncy house so you can make some super cool low gravity areas. We've got a geo capacity graph, which is from a great tutorial that's on the Facebook group right now, link in the description. And this graph is showing you exactly how much of each object equals 1% capacity. And this means that if you use a regular cube, you're gonna get two times more of those in geometric complexity than you would if you used a soft cube. So definitely looking at this graph, the red is the bad, the green is the good. So definitely come and check this out and check out that capacity video. Honestly, it's 20 minutes long and it's gonna change the way you build, seriously. 
On the entire opposite side of the world, we've got a daytime controller and color adjustment. So check this out. You can adjust the time of day and the color settings of your skybox. This is some really cool stuff. And if you open up the script, there's 24 different settings. So you can set the exact color and opacity that you want to display at that time of day. So if you want to be pitch black, it's 000 for the RGB and it's 255, meaning it's completely solid. Go ahead and try messing with it in your own world. It is a lot of fun absolutely gorgeous. You'll also note that we did fix the sliding door. You can now move this and place this anywhere and it slides beautifully from any direction. And we added pets. These pets are super awesome. If you zoom in and out, so on the properties panel, you select the object that you want to zoom in, then you zoom into the pet, delete the old one, move your new pet into position, and then let go and click zoom out. And now you've got your own custom pets with options for flying and walking. You'll also note we're now giving away the laser tag house party world as an asset. So we've done some great testing there. It's now ready for you to use and make your own house, your own party. You can just import that world or you can go check out the video right now to see how we made it out of the mini game template. We've also added a teleporting visual effect and sound effect, which creates an awesome splash. And you can duplicate this everywhere to make super awesome splashes while only using one visual effect and one sound effect. In our natural selections, you'll find a new assortment of pots and plants and you can combine them together to create some really amazing combinations that are just a little bit unique and feel free to make your own plants and your own pots seriously this stuff is really cool i look forward to seeing these things in your worlds We've got a whole educational resource section. We're working on building this out even more, but you'll note there's an emoji reference guide, which allows you to see what number correlates to which emoji, which is super useful. And we have a blow apart flower. This thing does not use your audio, but we're gonna fake it till we make it. So, <gasps> Unbelievable, am I right? And now let's head to the last section, the clubs, where we've got these awesome color sticks. And if you zoom into the color stick, you can actually adjust the visual effects color and make things that even fade from one color to another like this really cool stick. And last but not least, we've added VIP objects. You create a control object like this pyramid, you reference an object, and on the script, you can define who is allowed to grab that object. So now only I can grab this ball in this world. And if I type my name wrong, make sure capitalization does matter here. Then the ball will be force released and returned because it's running the object return script. Woo, that's a big update, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or you find anything else, be sure to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in Horizon. Bye.